In this video, I'm going to show you how to adjust the valves on this Troy built 30 inch rear engine lawnmower. It's a very easy job that you can do yourself at home and save a little bit of money. Now this lawnmower doesn't have the Briggs and Stratton 10 and a half horsepower. Instead, it has the power more 10 and a half horsepower. This is the MTD version or the Troy built version, whatever you want to call it. They don't even put their name on it. Okay. I'm also going to show you where to find the information on your lawnmower so that you know what the valve tolerance is supposed to be. So without further ado, let's dive right in. All right, so I've gone ahead and removed the wheel on this side right here. I don't think you really have to do that. It just gives me a little bit more room. So it, it takes two seconds, it's not a big deal. Now I've already broken this valve cover loose earlier, but you're gonna wanna be very careful trying to work yourself around. It doesn't have a gasket, at least on this one it doesn't. It's just a, a silicone seal. So your best bet, there's kind of like a lip right here. See that right there? Your best bet is to kind of take something wide like this and get behind it like that. I know the screws are still in it. I'm just trying to show you. And then give it a light tap. Start in a corner if you can. This is why I took the wheel off. And then tap it lightly, you know? The wideness will keep it from bending. You don't want to go in like this directly and try to bang something in between because you'll wind up scratching the block. All right, let me take the bolts out. And you want, probably want to be ready with a rag or some paper towel because there's probably some oil going to come out of there. This valve cover just takes 10 millimeter, uh, a 10 millimeter socket. All right, got the four bolts out, and we're just going to do just, well, there it went. It's like I said, I already broke it loose, but you get the idea. If you're finding any value in this video, please subscribe to this channel. I come out with videos like this as often as I can. All right, so I've gone ahead and removed the spark plug. Now we need to find top dead center on the compression stroke, okay? So when you push the clutch in and lock the brake, you release the belt for the drive so you can turn the engine from the bottom since the top of the engine is kind of uh, blocked off by these red covers. So we can grab the pulley on the bottom. And if you stick a screwdriver in the hole there, you can, you can feel it. All right. Now look, it's happening here. Piston is coming up, but notice this valve is down. So that's not the compression stroke. So one more. Okay, now neither valve is, is open. They're both closed, so that's the compression stroke. When you get to the top, you can feel a little bump in the crankshaft, and that'll tell you that you're right there at top dead center. All right, now remember, this engine is not the Briggs & Stratton. A lot of these mowers came with the Briggs & Stratton, but this one is the power mower, the Troy built, the MTD, whatever you want to call it their version of the engine. And when you search the internet, it's hard to find the valve lash specs. But luckily, if you come over here to the side of the engine by the muffler, there's a sticker there that shows what the uh, valve lash is supposed to be. It says it's in millimeters and it's 0 .010, right? Well, this is the closest one we got. So it's 4,000.102 millimeters. So that's going to work fine. I've already gone ahead and adjusted the bottom one. All right. Notice we have just a little bit of drag right there. That's the way it's supposed to be. But this top one is super tight. Now, this is actually the way this motor was when I took it apart. Both valves were super tight like that. And that disagrees with what's on the side of the block. Well, the engine cover. So very simple. This one is a 14 millimeter, and this one is a 10 millimeter. So just put them together like so, and break that loose so that you can adjust it. And we know it's too tight, so we'll have to go back. So right about there is where we want it, but when we tighten it up, it's gonna wind up too tight. So if we start off with it being just a little bit loose right there, when we tighten it, it should be just about right, hopefully. And you might have to play with that three or four times to get it just right. Yeah, 
And there we go. Now what you want to do is spin the engine around again so that you can recheck it. Again, looking for that little bump right there that you'll feel when the crankshaft is a top dead center. Bottom one's great. And the top one's just perfect. So there you have it. Now we just need to get this cleaned up right here. We'll clean up our valve cover and put it all back. Now one of the things that you can use to clean this up is a flat razor blade, being careful not to gouge up the uh, head, you know, the block. And just carefully cut that old stuff off of there, trying not to contaminate the engine with all that garbage. Just like that, kind of work your way around. You can use a really fine sandpaper. You can use steel wool if you're really careful with it, not to let it contaminate the engine with all the little metal fibers that come off of that. The sandpaper is probably better. So I'm gonna go ahead and work on this and I'm gonna clean up the valve cover. And by the way, I only showed adjusting this valve here. Obviously you're gonna to wanna to do both valve lash the same way. They're both the same. All right, got the valve cover cleaned up. Now you can clean the valve cover up with anything because you can clean that. So I've just got this gasket maker right here. It's nothing special. I think I got it from Advanced Auto Parts. And just kind of spread a thin layer around. Doesn't have to be real thick. Doesn't have to be thick at all, just a thin layer. And that's about it. Just bolt it back on there. That's about it. You can feel it when this gets tight enough the way this is made. All right, let's put the spark plug back and see what we got. All right, let's see how she sounds. Now I do want to mention that I let that uh, valve cover dry for about an hour, maybe an hour and a half. I wanted to give that Permatex a little bit of time to dry before I put oil to it. Might not matter, but that was just my choice. Let's go ahead and start it up. Runs like a champ. Okay, so I hope this video has been helpful for you. Thanks for watching.